to Word First Radio. Hey, what's up, you guys? Welcome to Word First Radio, the podcast brought to you by Word First Ministries. I am your host, Jacob O'Neill, and today we're continuing with part two of our interview with Vishesh. Enjoy. So, so the, the general mm-hmm. gist of what I'm trying to say uh, is that since the claim is that, that there's two primarily primary claims that jump mm-hmm. out to me, is that A, there's a person who died and came back. Yeah. Uh, and the word that they gave is the word of God, and mm-hmm. that's true. Yeah. Uh, so both of those are very definitive claims, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. but we don't have any definitive way of checking what they said because they didn't write anything down. We have historical accounts of what mm-hmm. people wrote, and we have good reason to believe that what they say is most likely what the other person said. Mm-hmm. But from the way that I've lived life, uh, whenever somebody tries to say what I did or how I did it, there's mm-hmm. always embellishments in there. So, yeah, we, like, well, so making, I was saying before, you, do, you don't have to approach the text as though it's unembellished. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You say, what is this person saying? Like, what is this person saying? So, someone is claiming that Jesus uh, died and, and then was raised from the dead, and that mm-hmm. person sincerely believed it. Mm-hmm. Whatever the embellishment is, they believe that core truth mm-hmm. that Jesus was that Jesus died and then was raised from the dead. Mm-hmm. So you investigate and evaluate that, and if they show themselves credible and trustworthy there, uh, then you consider carefully the other things that they that they say and seem to say. And wh- where do I think I've, when I, as I'm reading this, where do I where does this seem uh, like an embellishment mm-hmm. or how do I understand the quotations then of Jesus? Jesus said this, and you have two right. sentences, and he goes, is that exactly word for word, word mm-hmm. what Jesus said? Mm-hmm. And if not, then what words might have been added? What are what are they getting at? But I think if they get that core truth <laughs> right about who Jesus is mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. what he said he is, then we – then. Oh gosh, I don't want to build the whole um, the whole doctrine of inspiration for you, but I'd say you can approach the text with a generally skeptical mm-hmm. attitude and say what what is reasonable to believe about these claims of these people because there are uh, I mean there are historical rules of and even modern rules of testimony. Mm-hmm. How do we what are the kinds of th- how do right. how do we find useful and likely true testimony? What are the features of testimony that would let that would tend to um, uh, make it that would lend ten. I'm sorry, that would make it credible mm-hmm. as opposed to incredible. Mm-hmm. And you just apply the apply those rules, mm-hmm. just like you would any other historical claim. Yeah, but, and it would be, I think, we'd be less than uh, perfectly rational if we were hyper skeptical about all historical events, because well, the person who experienced the event didn't write this down. The witnesses who experienced it wrote it down. And you're like, uh, I'm, okay, yes, mm-hmm. but. Can we still have confidence that what the witnesses said is true? Mm-hmm. Maybe it's not written from the same point of view as the person who experienced it, etc. But you know, we—that's that, how we go about our lives all the time, is with the testimony of other people. But but I, I was just going to say that yeah. it stops becoming mm-hmm. being special. I think that's the reason why. I'm coming back to it, mm-hmm. is that then it becomes just a story that somebody said. Then it yeah. becomes to me like something in the Arabian Nights, because in mm-hmm. the Arabian Nights as well, there's mystics or stories or mm-hmm. supernatural beings that come and help you. The jinn, for example. Yeah. Uh, the, the whole reason why it's such a powerful story is mm-hmm. because it's so it, it has supposedly historical account that this mm-hmm. happened, and there's a whole doctrine uh, that uh, was built from it. And mm-hmm. that doctrine asks you to not accept other doctrines, as mm-hmm. far as I understand. Uh, so, because if, if, if it's just a story, mm-hmm. which is how I've always uh, kind of considered it, is that it's a great story, because I, I look at mm-hmm. it the way that I've looked at Hinduism or mm-hmm. Buddhism or Stoicism. It's just they are texts that you can use along with your life as inspiration to understand how to mm-hmm. live well. Well, help me to understand this. You and I have had this conversation a lot of times, mm-hmm. and when we get to the resurrection, mm-hmm. it feels like we just, we're not, uh, it feels like we're not connecting. Mm-hmm. Because what I say is something like, no, 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 this is a purported historical event mm-hmm. that witnesses of the event said, here's what happened, here's how you can know, mm-hmm. and here are the other people you should go interview. Mm-hmm. And then another person, a historian, goes, all right, I interviewed all those people, and here's what they all have to uh-huh. say. And it's a purported <laughs> okay. historical event. Mm-hmm. And when I, I say, so it's either true or it's not. Mm-hmm. And if it's false, then you're right. That's at the bottom of my structure, yeah. and everything else crumbles, and I should be doing much 
different things with my life if the mm-hmm. resurrection is not true. But I go, this is a historical thing. Invest it like you would any other historical thing. And then your response very often is something like what you just said. You're like, but then Cam, it's just another story. It's another story like uh, Siddhartha under the tree mm-hmm. or the the jinn and whatever. Or it's then it's it's just a story. And I have no. I'm like, no, no, no. It's not just a story. It's a historical mm-hmm. claim. Well, and is- we can we can investigate whether it's true or false. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if it's true, it's if it's if it's false. Then you go, that's an interesting story, and people are organize their lives around it, and it's, it's not true in any actual sense, blah, blah, blah. And I'm going, no, 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 it's true in the actual sense. Mm-hmm. It's true in the same way that if I told you what I did yesterday, yesterday, my daughter did not go to Barnhaga. She stayed home with me, and mm-hmm. we did all of these various things. Was that, yes, that was the day before. Uh, that was on Monday. Yeah, but, that was on Monday. And I said, so we went here, and I bought her some candy at this place, mm-hmm. and I took her to his place for lunch, da, 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 da. And if I told you that, I don't think you'd go... Yeah, but Cam, that's just a story. Mm-hmm. I don't know why I should believe that. Well, no, it's that that's my testimony of a historical event. Mm-hmm. And you can investigate it, and there are various ways you can do that. And we live in a modern, highly technological age where um, you could put together whether or not the story I told you was true or false, or you could take me at my word. Mm-hmm. But nevertheless, you could investigate it. Mm-hmm. I'm saying the story of Jesus is that. It's not some it was not people making up fables or telling a story like a fairy tale that has an interesting uh, interesting moral component to teach mm-hmm. you how to live better, blah, blah, blah. They're saying, my friend was murdered by the state, mm-hmm. and then we had lunch with him the next day, and I'm not going to take it back even if you crucify me. And in fact, if you put me on a cross, turn it upside down because I'm not worthy to be executed the <laughs> yeah. same way my friend was. Mm-hmm. That's a different, that's a historical claim that now has some credibility because you know that the person making the claim was sincere. So, you have a, a sincere truth claims Mm -hmm. made about a historical event, which is different than the construction of a myth in order to bring about a system, something Mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I mean, for me, it's just, uh, I don't see that necessarily holding up to my investigation, Yeah, which Mm -hmm. is that uh, for me, it seems wildly, uh, a few things jump out to me is that if a resurrection happened, why was it a one-off thing? Mm -hmm. Uh, why, Why is this something... Uh, a one-off event that just happened in the past and hasn't happened since. Because the way that you believe an uh, uh, ex- incredible claim mm-hmm. like resurrection or something else is is when it happens frequently. That's how science usually tests stuff out. It's like if we're mm-hmm. able to see a certain pattern repeating a few times, then we're like, oh, this is a natural course of history. Mm-hmm. There's probably a good rational reason behind it. Uh, to me, a resurrection seems very much like a pantheon of Greek gods. Like, it's 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 an embellishment to a story to give it more power. Uh, mm-hmm. this, the reason why I believe it's an embellishment is because from what I was able to look up, mm-hmm. uh, at least when I was doing my research online, mm-hmm. is that most of the texts were written quite a bit later. Mm-hmm. Uh, and mm-hmm. again, they were third-person accounts. This was, uh, for me, that's already a red flag because mm-hmm. I see the person themselves not writing so i can believe that aurelius wrote the meditations because he wrote the meditations mm. right we have mm. copies that or, or it was the diary that he wrote it was there was never a reason for him to not write that per mm-hmm. se uh, and it was mm-hmm. a first person like he wrote it mm-hmm. but uh, when i'm hearing that uh, these were written say what is it, 60 to 70 years later, or no. at least the ones that we have? But, well, so, I don't agree with that. Yeah, so. <laughs> but, I, but there are many who say that. I, I actually think, I was, I was going to say this during the, um, uh, the whole, like, why didn't Jesus write anything mm-hmm. down thing. I actually don't disqualify, this might sound like kind of crazy, but I actually don't disqualify uh, stuff being written down in Jesus' lifetime. Mm-hmm. So the Sermon on the Mount, for example, mm-hmm. it's probably a sermon that maybe was written down. Jesus mm. probably gave it multiple times, yeah. which is why there are different readings in Luke and Matthew on the Sermon on the Mount. Um, not completely different. They line up like almost exactly in mm-hmm. most of the places. Mm-hmm. But anyways, um, so anyways, yeah, yeah. I don't. So I don't believe the Gospels were written uh, forty years after mm-hmm. Jesus. I think um, I am sympathetic. Uh, sorry, David. I am sympathetic to uh, Mark and Priority that the Gospel of Mark was written first. Mm-hmm. Um, that's uh, I think that's most probably true. That it was probably written in the forties, I, I think, and that's, and just because Mark was written in the forties, uh, from Peter's testimony, doesn't mean that that was the first thing written about the resurrection. The first thing written that's about the resurrection was probably in like the thirties, like probably like a year or, or a couple years after Jesus's life. Right. So um, we have a, we have a creed about Jesus' yeah. life that skeptical historians, non-Christian skeptical historians, date within months to maybe a few years after the purported resurrection. Mm-hmm. So we have the gospel texts. 
maybe written as early as the 40s, so within a decade, maybe 15 years of Jesus' death, life, mm-hmm. and resurrection. But those were not the first, those weren't even the first texts written mm-hmm. by the Christian community. So you have things written by uh, right. by witnesses and compatriots of Jesus even before the. But again, before do the, we have uh, mm-hmm. original documents for these? No, instead. of course not. We don't exactly. Have, no, so, no, 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 hang on. I'm not going to let you get away <laughs> with that. Because what we do have for uh-huh. the text of the New Testament is orders of magnitude better than any text of antiquity. Mm-hmm. So, if it's, it's a dangerous strategy yeah, to say, wait, we don't know what these original documents said. If we don't, then we don't know anything from before, say, 300 yeah. AD. No, fair enough. But the, the mm-hmm. only reason why I think that most uh, secular, or at least the reason why I call that out is primarily because, again, it's a very strong claim to be made. There's mm-hmm. not a whole lot of strong claims that historical otherwise... Uh, documents that say make of that sort sure like, you can have a general understanding of what the roman civilization was like by the on the basis of a lot of different texts and they don't uh tell you that this is true and this is how you're supposed to live life after and if you don't you're gonna burn an eternal well, hell mm. so so like it's it's yeah. a very strong claim to be made which is the reason why sure but i guess i want to understand what the counter claim would be Mm -hmm. which i'm like well listen if we don't have the original ones Mm -hmm. then they could have made up any old thing in the meanwhile and i just don't i don't think that's a reasonable claim and that definitely isn't how his history or historiography is done fair enough the the only reason why i say that is because the the embellishment that i've always uh thought to be was the resurrection itself because uh right again apologies if that no 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 i don't care that's uh, fine (laughs) because for me like yeah that's the thing that gives it the most power yeah of course Uh, uh, Mm -hmm. and if you propagate that then it's the most it's the strongest thing that you can inspire people with Mm -hmm. uh for me it seems like a totally possible theory Uh, i understand that uh he could have been uh extremely articulate inspiring speaker of some sort who Mm. who, uh, got these people who were down on their luck and uh, weren't doing well Mm. were being Mm. uh what's the word for it uh oppressed Mm -hmm. by the romans Mm -hmm. uh and yeah, he, he inspired them and then helped them kind of free themselves in some ways or give them some hope. Yeah. Uh, and I, I would say that... But I, I, I'm going to interrupt right there. Why would you believe any of that? Because that's historically something that's happened constantly. I mean, it may, has it? Because if, we, if we're going to call into question the, the, um, the documentary evidence mm-hmm. that includes... It's one thing to say, listen, I buy it up to the supernatural stuff. Mm-hmm. I buy it up to the supernatural yep. stuff. Then I would say, well, I've got to have, I think, mm-hmm. a pretty good reason not to buy the supernatural stuff. It's mm-hmm. one th- It's one thing to say, listen, we know resurrections don't happen. That's cool. And uh, fair enough. We see that in other texts. We're like, okay, he didn't He didn't do that thing. Like, mm-hmm. obviously, that's not a thing that happens. But then I think we have to investigate the, the evidence of that thing. So, we, mm-hmm. you're absolutely right when you say, listen, it all hangs on the resurrection. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to need really good reasons to believe mm-hmm. it. And yeah. We, we'll continue to talk about it, I hope. And there are really good reasons to believe there are the gospel accounts, the mm-hmm. the um, the the biographies of Jesus' life. Mm-hmm. But you know, then there are other things written by people. But by, by there are other New Testament documents, things mm-hmm. written by um, Jesus' associates and even his brothers. Mm-hmm. But there are also extra biblical. Uh, there's also extra biblical data stuff that is not mm-hmm. scripture. It's not in the Bible. That's more. You, you can't really call history at that time unbiased. Mm-hmm. But as right. unbiased it's as possible, it's not Christian. None of it's un- mm-hmm. There's none non-Christian unbiased. history yeah. that supports. And you say, okay, let's look at the let's look at the entire weight of all of the evidence. And I think if your position is it's a story people told in order mm-hmm. to make sense of how to live well or something, I think that's the first level of analysis Mm -hmm. and then we say okay but now let's look at the data let's look at the actual evidence you don't have to say Mm -hmm. you don't have to believe that the bible is the word of god in order to rationally believe that the resurrection is a real event in history and in fact there are people who believe that the resurrection is a real event in history who still aren't christians Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. that's not to say you have to swallow the whole pill all at once but i think we can investigate Mm -hmm. we can investigate it in stages and in series Mm -hmm. to see what is the best and right stuff to believe about Jesus. I'm I'm going to stop. If I can hop in here, because this idea of embellishment is one that's um, really curious to me as someone who's kind of obsessed with uh, early church documents and the history of the New Testament and things like that. 
where is uh, what Cam's saying, you know, there are you know, extra biblical stuff, you know, written by, he, we mentioned the Apostolic Fathers in the last episode, because now <laughs> we've been going for hours, we two episodes. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyways, uh, and those people, those are obviously Christians, they're writing letters to different churches and things like that, they're doing a lot of theology and things like that. But you also have uh, what have been called like the Gnostic Gospels. Mm-hmm. Uh, these are Gospels written sometimes hundreds of years after the events by people who, uh, based on the evidence, we have no reason to think that they knew Jesus or, mm-hmm. knew, the, or knew the people who knew Jesus. Mm-hmm. And they have something to say about Jesus, too. I'm talking about the Gospel of Thomas, the Gospel of Peter, things like that. Not written by Thomas or yeah. Peter. It's Jesus people. fan fiction. Mm-hmm. Jesus fan fi- fiction, basically. Yeah. And you ask, uh, well, I asked the question because I'm not afraid, and I don't think any of us should be afraid. Mm-hmm. Well, what did they say? What mm-hmm. did they say about Jesus? And you read, uh, for example, in one of the Gnostic Gospels, uh, at Jesus' resurrection, first of all, there's a giant crowd of people at the tomb. The, the uh, stone rolls away, excuse me. The Jesus, who is now like 100 feet tall, mm-hmm. jumps out of the tomb. He flies up to heaven. A talking cross floats out of the tomb. This I is see. like... This is like mm-hmm. pretty great stuff. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you know what a, I mean. So I read somebody that. Somebody make a movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> a talking cross follows Jesus <laughs> yeah. up to heaven, and it's like I, I read that, and it's like, okay, where's the embellishment? Yeah. Well, it's kind of all over the place. <laughs> and so I, yeah. I see that, and I see it's all over the place. And a really great one is, and one that fascinates scholars, is the Gospel of Thomas, because the Gospel of Thomas is another mm-hmm. one of these Gnostic texts, which was written earlier than the Gospel of Peter. Is written uh, some people say in the first century, I don't know, I, I don't know about that, mm. but maybe definitely definitely in the second century. Um, and you read the Gospel of Thomas, and what does it say about Jesus? Well, Jesus in that Gospel, uh, as he speaks, teaches things that none of the other four Gospels say that he did, none, of, none that Paul said he said, or that Peter said he said, or that Mark said, Peter said, Jesus said, mm-hmm. or anything like that. Jesus' message is completely completely different in the gospel of thomas it, it, there's this weird stuff about how like oh yes you uh women have to become men to be to enter the kingdom of god mm-hmm. which is very strange and and it is not doesn't sound anything like jesus's teachings in these other gospels mm-hmm. and so the, the only reason i'm bringing this up and it's why the apostolic fathers matter uh and why why it even matters at all what they thought about about these things which is that they were sincerely interested in the truth and you had gospels going around at the time Mm -hmm. that were filled with embellishments and legend and things to sound uh, uh, believable and, or sound and to new make, to make Jesus even Jesus <laughs> even Jesus even Jesus that's uh-huh, a great way yeah. to yeah. to make Jesus even Jesus here uh-huh. and they cared the earliest Christians after the generation after the disciples after mm-hmm. the uh, followers of Jesus they cared about it they were like no 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 hang on we can't just say anything we want mm-hmm. we can't just claim anything we want with any kind of embellishment at all. And when I read the Gnostic Gospels and I see the embellishments that were going on at the time about Jesus, and I read the four Gospels, uh, it's just just night and day. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't think that the mere fact of a resurrection raises to the level of embellishment. Uh, Considering the time, Mm -hmm. considering how embellishments worked at the time, I don't think it raises to that level. The only Mm. thing that would raise it to that level, and that's what it's what Cam touched on. I think you would agree. The only thing that could raise it to that level is the fact that it's supernatural, Mm -hmm. and I think that that's the problem. Yeah, 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 it's uh, obviously miraculous, uncommon. That's the point of it, right? Right. That's you said. Well, it'd be easier to believe with scientific mindset Mm -hmm. if we saw resurrections from time to time and we understood the mechanism that caused them. It's like, well, no, no. The Mm -hmm. reason there's one of them Mm -hmm. is because Jesus was authenticating himself. And by the way, Jesus raised another person from the dead. Jesus is not the only resurrection. Direction in the scripture, yeah. but he raised himself from the dead, and that's what's that's what's vitally important. After predicting he was going to, yeah. so I just wanted to not miss that. <laughs> How do we know that he resurrected other people from the dead? Uh, because the yeah. eyewitnesses uh, uh-huh. whose testimonies is, is uh, preserved in the four gospels uh-huh. uh, said that he did. That's why I think the evidence. That's. Uh, it depends on what you mean by no. So, I, I, well, I'll, yeah. I'll say this. Without trying to, d- to defend yeah, the yeah. stories, I'll say within the Christian worldview, mm-hmm. the resurrection mm-hmm. of Jesus is not the only resurrection. Uh-huh. So, but but it is still unique. Yeah. And it's unique because he it resurrected himself. I don't want to get... Mm-hmm. We, we can get there. Does There's, he say that he resurrected himself? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's yes. uh, in the... 
Oh, God. I'll, I'll find the, the description. I'll give it to you. But the, yeah, in the scripture, the okay. most explicit reference. Well, there's a few, uh, but the most explicit one is in the Gospel of John, written mm-hmm. by Jesus's best friend, mm-hmm. who says that uh, Jesus, in the beginning of his ministry, he records Jesus's words saying, "You tear down this temple, and in three days I will rise it up." And John says that. Jesus was talking about his body. Yeah. And I uh, just read it recently. It's in John 9 or 10. Jesus says, I give my life willingly. I can, I will lay my life down and take it up again. Yeah. So he mm-hmm. says of his life, no one takes it from me. I give it willingly and I take it up again. So, huh. so that's one thing about, about yes. the resurrection story. <laughs> so whatever, mm-hmm. whatever's happening, whatever embellishment or legendary development or whatever might be happening. Jacob makes a good point is that people at the time. So there were people in Jesus time teaching false things about Jesus. And we see those being corrected in scripture. Mm -hmm. And we see just after this, we have the first generation, you have Jesus disciples, right? All of his best friends who Mm -hmm. lived and ministered with him for several years. And they said, here's what Jesus is about. Mm -hmm. And then you have their disciples. And then you have other people saying, no, 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 here's what Jesus is about. Mm-hmm. And they're, they're being responded to right away. Nope, nope, nope. These people are lying. That's not what Jesus yeah. is about. Here's my authority and my direct line to the teaching of Jesus. Here's what, here's what he was actually up to. You have it happening, I'm not going to say during Jesus' lifetime, but definitely during the lifetime of the, the infant church, mm-hmm. the, during the writing sure. of, his, of his disciples. And for example, you have people showing up and saying that, uh, so Christians have this peculiar belief about Jesus and that Jesus was always was always a divine being. Mm-hmm. He's he's eternally existent. He's always God. But then in order to carry out his mission with humanity, he became human also. Mm-hmm. Not human instead of divine, mm-hmm. but human also. And it's taken time for us to understand it and it's still a philosophical difficulty and it's it's mysterious how it could work, but Christians believe historically and traditionally that Jesus had two natures, a divine nature and a human nature. And at the during the time of his disciples after jesus was died and resurrected then left there are people teaching no 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 no. that people had no problem with the idea that jesus was divine i don't Mm -hmm. say no problem lots of people had no problem with the idea (laughs) that jesus was divine right but it was this humanity thing he couldn't have been human and during his lifetime you get the or during the lifetime of the disciples you get uh, a philosophy called docetism Mm -hmm. which is that jesus was he was only appeared to be human Mm -hmm. he was actually fully fully divine and not human at all Mm -hmm. and you have you have a stream of Christians combating that. So, you, what you get is an embellishment. Mm-hmm. He appear, he's actually human. And it's, easy, it's easier to believe if he's God that he doesn't have the second human component, that it's not a half, it's a whole human nature, but how does one person have two natures and be <laughs> eternally existent, but then get born? Yeah. That's really hard stuff to wrestle with, and people wrestle with it even now, 2,000 years later. But the first generation of disciples in the early church would rather wrestle with that then accept an embellishment that no no he was purely divine the human stuff the human stuff was right. an was an illusion mm-hmm. and yeah. they had gave really interesting explanations for why it was an illusion and they went nope mm-hmm. you guys are out that's not who jesus was so we don't know how to explain it but we we're not going to accept that embellishment or the embellishments you find in the the so-called gospel of thomas right. where it's a bunch of it's just weird. It's a bunch of sayings of Jesus that don't match his actual philosophy at all. And then a bunch of weird stories about him that in one sense could have made him look even more superhuman, superhero-y. It's right. like the kind of stories you you think you might want somebody to, you might want someone to say of Jesus so that people would believe that he is who he claimed to be. Mm-hmm. But to to reiterate or to agree with Jacob's point, you have people at the time saying, nope, 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 that's not, what, that's not what was going on. That thing was an embellishment. And then you have a further difficulty for, um, you have a further difficulty, which is that people were preaching the message that Jesus was raised from the dead, and they're being persecuted for it in various ways, up to and including death. And they refused to recant. And you don't have, and this is all historically documented, but we don't have historical documentation of is anybody proving them wrong. Anybody saying, no, 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 that Jesus guy, here's his body, it's in the tomb, we'll just show it to you. Or, mm-hmm. uh, and any counterexample, they had lots of enemies who wanted them to be wrong and in fact um, persecuted them for their positive beliefs, but no evidence that they were proven or demonstrated wrong. Just mm-hmm. people who said, no, that can't have been what happened and they... Um, persecute them for it. So I think that the absence of a, um, the absence of a critical witness mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. counts in favor of the positive the positive witness because the positive witness refuses to accept further embellishment and does things like it says you remember all those the, the, Jesus did this then he did this then he appeared to me then to these people then to these hundreds and most of them are still alive mm-hmm. go ask them and go mm-hmm. go and investigate this you have Luke who authored Luke and Acts who was among other things, historian who went and investigated people and took notes and wrote them into a document to say, I want to know what the life of Jesus was like. So, he investigated it like a, um, uh, like a biographer would. Mm-hmm. And so, mm-hmm. anyways, all of that is to say, embellishment, legendary development, it's obvious because people don't raise from the dead. Mm-hmm. That doesn't happen. And mm-hmm. if someone told me a story, right, they're, that's, they're Rastafarians, right? They're Rastafarians believe that a guy who's alive, I think he's still alive today, maybe he's, he died, but they believe some guy is the Messiah. Mm-hmm. And you go and ask that guy, and he goes, no! <laughs> like, <laughs> stop it. Stop worshiping me. Yeah. I'm not divine. I'm not the Messiah, right? But, but the point is, they're saying things about him, mm-hmm. and uh, we have the benefit of technology. But you can test those things and go, what, mm-hmm. are, they, what are they saying about him? And they go, ah, those off- sound awfully legendary. Mm-hmm. We have the same things about Jesus. They're saying stuff that sounds awfully legendary, but then investigating it, and then his friends, like I said, going to the grave, even in horrific ways, which, by the way, the the horrificness of your death is not necessarily a test of your sincerity, but people don't do that for lies that they're telling. People, mm-hmm. people will accept death for things they believe are true, but people right. don't accept death like that for lies they're telling, and definitely not mm-hmm. consistently. So... Um, all of those, and there's there's a lot more to say, but all that is positive evidence in favor that the accounts we have of the resurrection, whatever else they say, did they get all of Jesus' words correct? I don't know. But it's like, did Jesus really die and really was entombed and then they made up the resurrection part? Mm-hmm. I go, ah, that's not an embellishment. Maybe how perfectly he delivered the Sermon on the Mount was, <laughs> right? Maybe they cleaned up his language, but what what were they actually embellishing? Like, what what is what's an exaggeration? I don't think that, I don't think we, it's reasonable to believe that Jesus died like anyone else. He like the death and the burial. That's mm-hmm. all true. But the resurrection thing, that's where um, that's where they're exaggerating. That never happened. I just don't think we have a good reason to believe that. Except resurrections don't happen. Mm-hmm. So okay, let's wrestle with the evidence. We know resurrections don't happen. So if it did, it would be highly unusual and totally out of the ordinary. But the evidence, uh, I have to say, and mm-hmm. mercifully, people way way smarter than myself have to say. The evidence is in favor of the resurrection really happened. So now we have to deal with that. We know that the resurrections don't happen. So what does that mean about the guy who said he was going to do it and then did it? And mm-hmm. that's kind of the point. Jesus goes, I'm going to lay my life down. I can take it back up. And then he lays it down and he takes it back up and he tells us why he did it. And now we just have to deal with that. And I think that that's, um, you know, Jacob commented earlier when Vishesh, you said that it's like the whole structure is on mm-hmm. top of this resurrection. He goes, oh, well, Paul thought so too. That's what Paul says. <laughs> yeah, Paul's like, listen, is. if Jesus wasn't raised from the dead, mm-hmm. then everything we're doing is in vain. Mm-hmm. And it's, he says it's even worse than that because he was a good Jew who said that means we're still dead in our sins. So, he takes it even to a religious place. So, first of all, if Jesus wasn't raised from the dead, then Christianity is false. Mm-hmm. And if Christianity is false, we're in big trouble mm-hmm. because we still have, because you still have this whole Jewish system to reckon with, which includes sin and separation from God. So, yeah. I mean, and also everything that's happened in Christianity's mm-hmm. history has also mm-hmm. been for no good reason then, per se. Ha, ha, yeah, oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. And that, listen, I, I want to... The persecution wanna, of other people and stuff like that, yeah. And I, I want to... The, the what? The persecution, the persecution of, of other people. Yes. The inquisitions yeah. and stuff well, like even, that. Uh, oh, yeah. And even to No, we condemn back, that for yeah. sure, 100%. And even Jesus to, would too, I think. I think <laughs> yes, I guess. Yes. <laughs> but even to bring it to my own life, it's like, I've spent a lot of money and a lot of years of study and devoted my life to something that if, if it's false, I recognize that I recognize that I am not occupying objective space, perfectly objective space about this, mm-hmm. because I have to admit that all of it was a waste. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and I try and be as honest as I, as I can about that and weigh the evidence honestly and sincerely, but... I mean, there's a reason why Paul said. Well, there's a reason why Paul said that. Like, if we're doing that, if if Jesus wasn't raised from the dead, then all of this stuff we're doing, our faith, it's all in vain. Mm-hmm. Like, none of what we're doing matters. And that would be a difficult, the very difficult yeah. pill to swallow two thousand mm-hmm. years later. Absolutely. Uh, we need to give somebody the last word because yeah. we need to wrap up soon. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, but I mean, yeah, Cam's been going on for a while, but I'm just hey. curious. And, no, <laughs> in a good way. All okay. good things. All good things. <laughs> all good things. Well, Jacob I, looks I, stupid. 
<laughs> oh my gosh. In a good way. So I'm sorry. All good things. Yeah, we should bleep that in post so that no one knows what you said. <laughs> okay. Uh, Vishesh, why don't, uh, why don't we uh, get your closing thoughts? Um, yeah, for so me, can, it, yeah. again, uh, yeah. the, the way I kind of try to approach this uh, is more from a curious perspective. Sure. Again, mm-hmm. uh, to me, I think a big thing for me to believe stuff uh, comes from a place of intuitiveness as well. Mm-hmm. And for me, intuitively, it still doesn't feel necessarily that's something that I would agree with. Yeah. And for me, a huge reason for me to believe in a certain system is that it empowers me to have some sort of flexibility. Mm. And and uh, mm. as much as we've talked about uh, like how much there's room for interpretation and stuff like that mm. in the Bible, for me, the, the essential fact again comes down to the fact that the whole of the message in mm. this case lies upon a single event yeah. being true or false. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I, I would feel like if that's false, I still think there's value in the teachings. Mm. I, I've never uh, mm. thought that there's no value in teachings because uh, for me, at the end of the day, it's wisdom of a lot of people living the same human life. Mm. Uh, and they're struggling with the same problems that humans always have. As mm. long as you fulfill the first level of the Maslow's hierarchy, uh, once you've kind of gotten food and a house and uh, stuff like that, you always kind of eventually end up on stuff like uh, what to do with my life, mm-hmm. meaning mm-hmm. and stuff like that, which I think is just a problem of language. But uh, for me, like there's still some value to be had in the system. But mm-hmm. if it collapses because a claim is false, mm-hmm. then uh, it, it makes me hesitant in yeah. believing in the system as a whole, because uh, I would much prefer to believe in systems partially. Because mm-hmm. uh, for me, like I don't necessarily agree with stuff entirely like stoicism Mm -hmm. or uh, hinduism but i think there's bits and pieces uh, which are valuable uh, in my life to take away from them so so i I see the appeal and it makes me actually more interested in reading uh the at least the four gospels Mm because from what i've been told they're not necessarily that big no it won't be that and i'm needing a book to read anyway (laughs) so 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 i might uh, uh, from a curious perspective just try and see what they're talking about Mm -hmm. uh it keeping aside the resurrection as something that I don't necessarily think in in my current purview is that important for me it becomes again a text that I can gain valuable insight from yeah Uh, maybe allow me to extend uh, some kind of an olive branch Mm -hmm. if you will and forgive me for uh, continuing on feel free to um, to respond to it and offer your comments uh, on it if you'd like Um, but I see so first of all, I think we can find some kind of common ground in this idea of like finding things that are appealing and different ideas. Mm-hmm. Maybe in, even if those ideas are religious ideas, mm-hmm. right? So it's not like I'm saying Christianity, except Christianity wholesale, mm-hmm. means you have to reject, I don't know, like everything about Hinduism mm-hmm. um, or everything about Buddhism or everything mm-hmm. about what, Stoicism or, mm-hmm. or something yeah. like that. Or any philosophy. that, mm-hmm. Or any yeah. philosophy, right? I, I think that there are things that are good, true, and beautiful in those worldviews. Um, but here's what I would say. I would say if the resurrection isn't true, um, I think you lose uh, not even just um, the entire thing of Christianity, but uh, maybe you wouldn't lose the whole thing, but you would lose the most important thing. Mm-hmm. You'd lo- lose the most central thing about it. Mm-hmm. You would lose why... Um, things being good, beautiful, and true are even important in the mm-hmm. first place. Um, and that is the the age-old problem, something that has to be solved, which is how do I fix my relationship with God? Mm-hmm. So if God exists, I know that I have not been perfect. Mm-hmm. I know that I have not been living the way that God wants me to live. How do I fix that relationship? Mm-hmm. Um, I think Jesus was convinced firmly that that was the most important question. And I think that that's the most important question, too. Mm-hmm. And other important questions that are good, beautiful, and true in like Hinduism and Buddhism and Christianity and things like that, um, uh, first of all, I would say, yeah, take those. It's not like I would rather have you not living a Christian uh-huh. ethic, right? Like, definitely live that, absolutely, even if the supernatural stuff is um, uh, too big a pill to swallow or mm-hmm. to accept right now, fine. Okay, I can, uh, I can accept that. Um, but I would say those things, while very important, are still secondary. Mm-hmm. I think the most important mm-hmm. thing is if Jesus is who he said he was, mm-hmm. and I think it was, 
that's the most important question to answer. So mm-hmm. if he was, and if he rose from the dead, then that changes that changes basically everything. Yeah. Yeah. For yeah. me, like mm-hmm. I, I guess uh, that's another thing. Again, sorry to keep that's going, fine. but uh, we'll we'll have this be the last word, and then we'll have to wrap it up. But yes, <laughs> please go ahead. But for me, I think uh, ontologically, that's not the way I kind of look at the word. Mm-hmm. Uh, for me, I, I forget what I was uh, watching. Uh, but somebody was talking about the the ontological differences between the way that a lot of historical philosophers approach their philosophy. Mm. And a lot of them come from a two-world perspective, mm. like Plato was one of mm-hmm. them. They had the idea of uh, a place of thoughts, of pure ideas, uh, and a real world of like mm-hmm. tables and chairs and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but for me, ontologically, I've always been a single world pers- person. Mm-hmm. For me, I don't perceive or conceive of there being an all-powerful entity Mm. uh, and that's never something that's helped me make decisions Mm -hmm. because I haven't in my lived experience or or in the way that I generally think about life experience any supernatural uh, Mm -hmm. experience in Mm. coming so for me it's a that for me I guess that's again the the kind of uh, maybe the difference that we have Mm. except for the common ground I I feel like there are beautiful ideas uh, that people from across history have had, which might relate to me and my life and help me live a more fulfilling or Mm -hmm. happier life uh, or a more healthier life, which Mm -hmm. I can look back on happily. But for me, that doesn't necessarily come from a relationship or or one of those is not having a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. For me, it's having, uh, say, being virtuous, doing the right thing, uh, not because uh, an entity... uh, will reward me for doing it mm-hmm. but because i feel it's the right the right mm-hmm. thing to do and that comes from again my conception of the way that the world works mm-hmm. which uh, doesn't include uh, an entity or, or a supernatural entity that's governing anything mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. so i think that that might be the thing that uh, mm-hmm. that way is a difference between us whereas like for me ontologically i feel it's all just physics uh, <laughs> yeah. oh my goodness <laughs> we have so, oh it's so not well, yeah. I'm sorry about it. <laughs> Well, uh, yeah, uh, I appreciate that mm-hmm. more than you might think I do. I, I, I appreciate oh, those. Thank you for those. having me on as well. Yeah. It was great. We yeah. love, we, are you kidding me? We love having you on. And I mean, we, I would be open to having you on again to mm-hmm. talk about that thing you just wound up talking <laughs> yeah. about right now. <laughs> <laughs> that will, oh, my gosh. I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> we can keep it for next time. Okay. Yes. We'll keep it for next time. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you listening at home. Uh, we hope that's it's going to be really hard to love Vishesh as much as we do but uh, <laughs> we hope you liked Vishesh as much as we did on these last uh, couple episodes uh, and hey uh, we look forward to giving more thoughts about it more conversations more uh, debates if you will uh, maybe another episode where I just uh, sit back and shut up and don't say anything just let that, <laughs> and let's just let them speak but anyways we'll see you again next week God bless for listening to Word First Radio. Be sure to like, subscribe, and check us out online at wordfirst.us. Yeah!